sometimes a Bible is like a hammer. It's like a hammer. Sometimes it's like a sword. You know, not to be violent against people, not at all, but it's a picture. It's a sword that kind of cuts deep. And uh, sometimes it's like water. There's many different uh, things. You know, in Ephesians it says it's the, by, the washing of the water or the, by the Word. So there's all sorts of uh, illustrations of what the Word of God is like. Now, Jesus is really uh, trying to reach everyone, and He gives people chances. And um, He gives people lots of chances, actually. And so in this uh, next um, story, um, it's absolutely right after the last one, when the the Sadducees, the uh, Pharisees, the people that he's talking to there, a number of them, he, he, uh, they admitted that those miserable men should be, um, you know, wickedly destroyed because they're wicked and all that, and that the vineyard should be handed over to some other nation or some group or something that's going to take care of it, new tenants. And Jesus did not disagree with that. As a matter of fact, he goes on and says, right here in this passage, he jumps right in there and he's using a hammer, you know, like the Word of God is a hammer now. Have you never read in the scriptures? Now, these guys read the Bible all the time, so this is quite a punch to them. He said, have you not read in the scriptures? Then he proves to this group that he's talking to, the leaders of the uh, Jewish nation and the leaders of the religious, you know, groups and all. Uh, he proves to them that what they just said is talking about them. He turned it right towards them. And he quoted Psalm 118. And, uh, and I'll, I'll read that passage right there. Um, he says, A stone which a builder has rejected has become the head, head corner, headstone of the, uh, of the temple. He says, The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, the top stone, the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. It's a re wonderfully, ridiculously wonderful thing that God has done. And, uh, and therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you. He's pointing right at him. He's looking at these leaders. These are the leaders. In other words, he's going to take the vineyard. He's going to take the, uh, the kingdom of God, which is another picture for the vineyard, and will be taken from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. So he, he kind of jumps from uh, the vine, if you remember, you know, here's the vine, here's the stick, or the pole, the wooden stake, and the vine is like here, it's hooked up here, and you have bunches of grapes, you have a bunch of grapes, so you have a bunch of grapes, I'm not going to draw the little grapes, but you know, all these little grapes are on that, uh, uh, on that vine, and that whole vineyard is, he says, uh, which do isn't producing fruit, in other words, your lives, leaders, and, and those who were following those leaders in Israel, the Jewish nation who was following, who was rejecting Jesus, they weren't really loving God as they should from their hearts. Uh, they, they had no fruit, and, and their vineyards were empty, basically. And, uh, and then he, turn, he goes from this, this bunch, like this bunch, this fruit, let's say this is a, a, uh, the grapes uh, and all, he goes from that to a different, um, a different picture here. Here's the grapes. And then he, go, he flips it into another uh, quick metaphor in a picture, and that is a stone. Okay, so um, here's a stone right here. You know, a rock, a stone here. Um, and by the way, the Bible, st the, the Bible uses the word stone all over the place as a picture. You know, as a matter of fact, very beginning, uh, in Genesis chapter 49, God is called, I think in that first, in that very passage, a stone. And the Bible talks about it through, he's my rock of my salvation, he's my rock, he's my fortress, and all that really good enduring substance and a rock. And then he changes the picture into like a building. So you have a building, you have a foundation here. Okay, and then the cornerstone would be uh, this right here, a really large stone probably. It may not be this large. Anyway, a stone that kind of connects, like if you have, uh, if I do it this way, and you have a, a wall here that's built on it and a wall here that's built on it, um, the cornerstone is that portion of the, ba uh, of the foundation. And man, is that mentioned in the Bible, in the Old Testament and New. And uh, I lay on Zion a cornerstone, a tried stone, a precious stone, a, um, 
a, uh, a what's that word a precious stone a tried stone a sure stone you know really a solid rock that's Isaiah 28 and and then also in Isaiah 8 it mentions that it's a stone of stumbling a rock of offense that's Jesus the, the Jewish people and even today a lot of the Jewish people are tripping over this thing that Jesus is the Messiah they're tripping over that stone it's a picture and then uh, God's building a building here his church and uh, he's turning it uh, away from the Jewish nation not completely it's still offered um, but he's handing it towards the um, not only Gentiles but also those Jews who receive the Messiah um, and a Jewish and Gentile thing and by the way the wall and the wall Paul says in Ephesians 2 the wall is, uh, is Gentiles the other wall that connects to each other at the cornerstone they connect it like a corner of a house or a corner of a building the Gentiles and the Jews come together in Jesus and they become one building fitly joined together it's a beautiful beautiful picture um, but this is super super sad for Jesus he's not happy about having to say all this to them he's really telling them very point blank that you guys has been taken away from you and all that why because they're rejecting God's plan and God's plan was proclaimed by John the Baptist the kingdom of heaven is here that we've been taught that the prophets talked about for years all these centuries hundreds of years and then it's here it's near and then Jesus says repent for the kingdom of God is here too and you got to believe this gospel as it says in Mark and Jesus uh, is the cornerstone he's the main one it's everything's focused on him to build that building you can't have the the main top stone and the cornerstone and the foundation uh, built without uh, that cornerstone and he is what the whole building is built on there's major main rocks underneath each building the house I'm sitting in is built on rock and there's major slabs of stone there well Jesus is the main slab it's the main stone and um, uh, if I go to uh, maybe I'll end with this in Isaiah in, in Psalm I don't know why I jump say Isaiah suddenly um, uh, in Psalm 118 um, I'll read that passage because uh, he quotes that and it says right here let's see if I can find it real quick um, 118 okay it says open uh, this is a gate then I will the stone the builders rejected the builders in this passage it's already predicted that Jesus is going to be rejected the builders are the leaders the leaders who are supposed to be building the church the church the Jewish church the Jewish nation up they're rejecting the stone that's what exactly what was happening and they're rejecting him right then and there <laughs> they didn't they did not like oh it made them really mad when they were saying this because the the Bible in the next video we'll talk about it how they knew he was talking about them Wow the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone or the cornerstone the Lord has done this as marvelous in our eyes and it is marvelous it's fantastic what God did Jesus comes we stoop slow becomes a human being he lives among us shows us what the Word of God really is trying to say and da 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 he goes on and on and then he suffers and he bleeds and he dies and he raises from the dead this is marvelous what a story and the the prophet David actually is writing this he's uh he's the one that's uh, actually declaring all this originally by the way I believe that uh, that passage first of all was to David himself he was rejected for a while by by Absalom and the uh, Israel uh, tribes of Israel rejected him and he also was not even anointed king for a long time waiting for Saul you know th that God anointed David he had to wait so there's a lot of rejection his enemies rejected him and all the stone the builders rejected is primarily and initially I believe with David and then has become the cornerstone the Lord has done this this is a day with your Lord has made this is the age the uh, uh, the period the season that he's made let's rejoice and be glad let's be glad in the gospel of Jesus Christ and then he goes uh, it says oh Lord save us or Lord grant us success guess what that word save us means Do you remember a couple videos back few videos Hosanna here's where it is it's right in that same passage that it says Hosanna save us O Lord the next verse guess what it says blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord remember that's what they said as he entered uh, Jerusalem Blessed is he and they were shouting Hosanna children later on were saying Hosanna this all is right in here and it's right in front of them it's really being fulfilled right there about a thousand years before 
the the psalmist as a, as a prophet is speaking of the stone that those builders rejected it's become the cornerstone it's the building of god god's in, is doing this his doing it's marvelous oh hosanna blesses he in the name of the lord it's all right there in those little verses and others but that just really speaks volumes it really so it shows how god really knows what he's doing and and uh and jesus unfortunately was rejected and uh, and then God, you know, put 40 years later, he had the temple destroyed and and everything. And it's a new system now. It's a new new stuff that's uh, risen out of the wonderful uh, Hebrew scriptures of the Old Testament. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I hope you got something out of that. It's very cool. God bless you. Thanks for listening.